what? There has never been and there will never be another man like Jesus. Amen. There has never, never been, been no will, will there, there ever be a man like the one who came from Galilee. He's the one who opened blinded eyes, the one who healed the lame. I'm talking about Jesus. He has never changed. Who spoke and turned the water into wine? Who spat upon the ground and gave sight to the blind? Who spoke to the dumb man and he can't talk? Who spoke to the lame man he got up and he walked? There has never been, no will there ever be a man like the one who came from Galilee. He's the one who opened blind and died, the one who healed the lame. I'm talking about Jesus, he has never changed. Well, there has never been, no will, will there ever be a man like the one who came from Galilee. He's the one who opened blinded eyes, the one who healed the lame. I'm talking about Jesus, he has never changed. Oh yes, I'm talking about Jesus, he has never changed. Never changed, amen. Never, never changed, never will change, amen. never can change, amen. amen. There's some things that, that, that the Lord God Almighty Himself cannot do, and change is one thing He can't do, amen. Ain't you glad for that this morning? He's a, a, a never changing God. Oh, I got something to wake y'all up, amen. Tina, turn this up in the monitor for me just a little bit so I can hear just a little bit better. Or I want to thank, I want to go ahead and thank right quick. I missed y'all last week, amen. I miss, I missed our. Our church family, uh, we went down and was able to be at Brother Shane and McKenzie's wedding last week, and we really enjoyed our time, but we've missed y'all. But uh, I've heard from a few of y'all that really enjoyed Brother Rick Fields uh, last Sunday. You know, uh, He's a great man of God, and I love him dearly. He's a, he's a great mentor to me and a good good advice, a good ear to get in. Uh, and it's good to have him in my ear sometimes. Uh, I really thank God for him. And if, if you missed it the other night, I think uh, Brother Lewis will help me shout amen and Brother Rick and Miss Shirley will say that he preached a, he preached a, a, probably the best message I've ever heard him preach Thursday night under the tent. It was good. Uh, I mean, it just really encouraged and stirred my soul. So uh, I'm thankful thankful for him and thankful for y'all enjoyed him. But, uh, but I'm glad to be home. And, and with that being said, I thought about long and hard what to preach. And I said, well, after I follow somebody like that, I better do my homework. Amen. So uh, uh, I, I think I've got what we need this week. I wanted to go in a different direction all week. I wanted to preach. Um, something different on Friday night, and uh, God just led me in another direction. And uh, in saying that, uh, a thank you to my church family for coming supporting me uh, on Friday night. Uh, it, it done my heart good to know that y'all come out on, on a bad night to support your pastor. That, that really meant a lot to me. And, uh, thank you for that from the bottom of my heart. If you have your Bibles this morning, uh, I want you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of First Kings this morning. First Kings. Uh, that's right before Second Kings. Amen. Amen. First Kings, and when you get to First Kings, I want you to, to look down to chapter number 19. I got a thought this morning. I think it will help us and encourage us. And, and there's some things that, that we deal with. Uh, we all deal with things. Amen. I got a witness. Uh, we all have things we deal with. When you get there, stand up and stretch your legs just for a minute. First Kings, chapter number 19. First Kings, chapter number 19. I know some of y'all still turning. Let me go ahead and start reading. I got a little bit of scripture to read. The Bible says in verse number 1, one of uh, chapter number 19, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. 
In other words, she didn't told him, she said, by, by this time tomorrow, I'm going to have your head. Amen. I'm just, I don't want you to understand where I'm going with this. And verse number three says, and, and when he saw, when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die. And, and, and said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. Verse number 5 reads, And he lay and slept under the juniper tree, and behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals, and a cruise of water in his head. And he did eat and drink, and laid him down again. All of us like to take a good nap after we eat a good meal. Amen. If I got a witness right there, let me keep on reading. The Bible says in verse number 7, And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went into the strength of the meat for 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. And he came thither to a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, what doest thou here, Elijah? Let us pray. Father, God, I thank you for your word this morning. God, I thank you, Father, for the, the presence of the Holy Spirit. God, I felt you in this place already. God, I just thank you so much for showing up and fellowshipping with us. And God, we're, God, we're, some of us are weary. God, some of us is wounded. God, some of us is tired. Father, some of us, God, just don't know which way to turn. But God, I pray right now, Father, if you would help us, you would encourage us. God, we would go back out into the world and share the good news of the gospel. Father, we love you, God. We lift you up. Everything that's said, done, proclaimed, preached, and everything, anything, God, about this day is all about Jesus Christ. We love you and praise you. Amen and amen. You may be seated in God's house this morning. Amen. The grass withers and the flower will fade away, but the word of our Lord shall last and stand forever. Amen. Now, find your good neighbor. Look at somebody and tell them, Brother Frank, he needs your prayers. He needs all your help. He needs a little stirring along. So we're going to get on through this. Amen. I got two of y'all. Amen. I lost everybody else already. I want to preach on this simple thought this morning. Um, not probably in a very good title. I should have talked to Tina a little bit more about it. I like to let her title my messages. She believes, knows how to word things better than I do. But uh, I just want to talk about this simple thought. Somebody help me deal with this stuff I'm dealing with. Somebody help me deal with this. Somebody help me deal with what's going on in my life. I want you to think about this. Hold that thought right there. My brothers and sisters, as I began to prepare and, and begin to think about which direction I was going to go in this morning, the Lord led me to something, and uh, I want to read you something that I stumbled across and gave me this thought. If you look it up, and according, according to the Center of Disease Control, it was a pandemic going on long before COVID-19 was ever created or ever thought about. There was something already going on. I found out as a Thursday, about, I don't know, 2 o'clock in my office, I found out that 350 million people right here around us suffer from this. Four out of ten people, they, 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 they struggle with it. They deal with it on a daily basis. And six out of ten people have symptoms because of this one thing. And out of all these people, seven out of ten of them believe in God and attend church regularly. And it's caused by, I'll go ahead and say jacked up things in our life, but it caused, it's, caused, it's caused by broken relationships, financial problems. Um, uh, I, I, I can say a lot more, but let me move on right here. Single people struggle with it. Married people struggle with it. Everybody or somewhere along the way. Married people struggle with it, and a lot of people are lonely because of it. Because, let me go ahead and tell you right quick, you can be married and be miserable. Don't, don't look at nobody right now, amen? Don't, don't look around too much, but you can be married and be miserable. And you can also be single and be miserable, amen? You can be miserable. Many struggle with this because they just want to be happy. All of us just want to be happy, amen? I want to be happy. I like being happy. And when you're struggling with this, you cannot find happiness anywhere. What is it, brother? What is it? What is it you're talking about? It's called, brothers and sisters, depression. 
is called depression. We all struggle and deal with the issue of depression. And as I kept reading, I learned that this depression is caused by an imbalance in the brain. It's caused by an imbalance in the brain that causes the new neurons to fire slower than they normally would, causing an air of sadness, a uh, 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 being down, a uh, be, uh, uh, heaviness, a uh, 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 dark feeling in our spirit, darkness in our lives. Moments where you feel dejected, depressed, and completely unappreciated. Amen? Have I, anybody ever feel that way? I feel that way all the time. I feel like I stay depressed half the time because I don't know nothing. And I and I and I done I done some study, I done some research, and I looked and thank God for the internet, because there's a wealth of information on there when you begin to look up things. And I found out that there are five realms of depression. So stay with me. I need to help somebody this morning. This word is for somebody. There's major depression. Where you just have a loss of appetite. I don't have major depression this morning. Amen. <laughs> Let me just go ahead and tell you, I, I got that one covered. Amen. I ain't got major depression this morning. But it says you have a loss of appetite where you don't feel like eating anything. You don't even enjoy food. You don't have any interest in much of anything. And then there's, if I say this word right, I had to ask Tina about it. And I'm not still real sure about this, but I, if, if there's the stimulant. Does that sound right? The stimulant. That where you just sleep all the time. And I might have a little problem with that. I wish. Amen. But I can't sleep like I used to. But you ever wake up tired? Amen. Maybe you're, you're dealing with the stimulant. Wake up tired, go to bed tired, get up, work all day. You're still tired no matter what you do or what you don't do. Don't even really feel like getting out of bed some morning. That's the stimulant. Then there's this manic depressive psychosis. We call it bipolar disorder. It's when you can be happy one moment and then just sad, just crazy over there, just one, one extreme to another. I mean, you just bounce off the wall sometimes. I mean, speak to people, hey, how you doing? And in the next 10 minutes later, you want to say, well, what you happy for? I mean, just, 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 just bipolar disorder. You have these radical mood swings. Then there's seasonal depression. When during, and I think we all, some of us that's lost loved ones, we deal with this around Thanksgiving and Christmas and those birthdays when there's, uh, I, I mean, we start thinking about the people that's gone and not, not here anymore. I think we all deal with that to some degree. I mean, we and why me? I mean, why did it happen to me? And all of a sudden, this depression it finds you, brothers and sisters. It comes to your doorstep and it comes to where you are. And then watch this. Got one more. There's psychotic depression. Well, you become paranoid. And you feel like everybody around you, everybody is out to get you. Oh my, come on, help me right here. People use you. They walk over you. They talk about you. I mean, they, 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 you, you can't get away from it. They want everything they can drain out of you, but when you need somebody, they ain't never going to be found. That's psychotic depression when we feel that. The CDC says it's a chemical imbalance. But I'm going to stand before you this morning on this last Sunday, amen, in October to make a de declaration on the CEO of Kingdom Enterprises this morning that no chemical imbalance of the brain, no, no, I'm not going to let it tear me down because I know what it is. It's not a chemical, really, to me, it's not a chemical imbalance in my brain. No, this thing is spiritual. It's just as much spiritual as it is a chemical imbalance going on in your mind. Matter of fact, I've done some research and all. If you read your Bible and study your Bible, you'll understand that sometimes when we're down, there's a demon that's after you. Matter of fact, there's a demon handcuffed to you. They could even be a demon that's assigned to you. And he's there to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. Yeah. That's what they do. Oh, I wish I had a witness right here. If you let depression do it, brothers and sisters, when that, when that gets on your back, it can completely, completely and totally wipe you out. It can take you down a, a, a rabbit hole that you can't ever come out of before if you let depression have its way. Now, you will live to make everybody else happy Instead of making God happy and learning how to be happy by yourself or with yourself, you'll live to do all of that and never be happy yourself. If you let depression have its way, you'll spend more money than you have. Matter of fact, you'll spend money that you don't have. 
doing stuff you can't afford, and then there comes a miserable outcome. If you let depression have its way, you sit in the house with the lights on, with the heat running, or the air conditioning running, with a loaf of bread up under your arm, money in the bank, amen, and say to people, I'm depressed. It's what we do. But I have an announcement I told you to make. The devil is a liar, amen. I said he's a liar this morning. I don't care what you say, my brothers and sisters. It's time for the church to break its silence on this thing called depression, amen. It's a mental killer that's been hurting people and destroying people for a long, long time. And I don't know if you can hear it. I don't know if, 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 if you understand what I'm saying, but I can tell you right now, from the corridors everywhere across this world, we hear a silent cry. Sometimes people ain't even got to say nothing. It comes from the schoolhouse in the educational arenas. I mean, where teachers struggle with it. It comes from downtown in the courtroom where these mighty lawyers, they struggle with it. I mean, doctors, I mean, they struggle with it. Pulpits, man standing behind a pulpit struggles with it. I mean, it comes, I mean, it comes from all areas across the world. Who, look, people don't know how to handle it. Amen. It comes from folks sitting up on the front row sometimes. We don't know how to handle it. Somebody help me deal with this thing going on in my life. Somebody help me. When you look through history, brothers and sisters, you look through all of history, it ain't hard to see that this thing has been attacking us for a long time. And I ain't talking about just people, movie stars and famous people we see on TVs and athletes. You hear about them struggling with it. Oh, no, I ain't talking about them this morning. This study says that one out of four, one out of four is dealing with it right now. If we took a survey and we went one, two, three, four, he's struggling with it. One, two, three, four, she's struggling with it. Brothers and sisters, that's why our praise team, our choir, our musicians can get up here and play and sing and you can sit there and not say amen. It's why you can get up on Sunday morning, put on your Sunday best, come to church, amen, walk into church, and still struggle. Depression. God help us in here this morning. But I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, I declare a spirit this morning over your life. I'm telling you right now, we're going to declare it right here that the Lord has been better to you than you've been better to Him. And you're blessed whether you realize it or not. You may have to struggle. You may have to strain. and Have strains coming along in your life. Don't know which way to turn. You might have had a death in your family you don't know how to deal with. But I declare your life is worth living. It's worth living this morning. It's worth living, brothers and sisters. I'm going to go ahead and say you might be financially broke, amen. You may not have money, but you right, got the right in your life to keep on moving forward and keep on walking forward with Jesus Christ. Your children are blessed. I declare your children are blessed, amen. Your health is going to be all right. When all else fails, amen, you can look to the hills, amen, from which cometh your help, amen. Your help comes from the Lord, amen. Brother Lewis, it's a story of Elijah. It's the story of Elijah. He's born in Tishba. But he's a prophet of God. It is on the backside of his battle of Mount, Mount Carmel with the 450 prophets of Baal. One man stands for God on a mountain against 450 and literally, watch this, literally causes fire to come down from heaven. Oh, my. And Jezebel, this wicked king, I mean, wicked queen of King Ahab, decides that she, will, she wants to kill him. I got a price on your head. The Bible says, I read it in your ear, and Elijah runs, hides under a tree, and says, I've had enough. Some of y'all may, I, I preached a message one time, it was entitled, I've had enough. Some of y'all, this morning, I've had enough. You know, brothers and sisters, whenever we get to heaven, I thought about this the other day, I've had enough. You ever thought about when we get to heaven, I'm just going to find Adam, I'm going to run him, kick him in the knee. You think, that thought ever crossed your mind, you started all this, you've done all this. 
Don't laugh. Amen. I tell him, you mess this thing up. Lord, help me, sister. You don't ever have thought like I thought? I think, okay, all right. But I'll tell you right now, I'm also, I'm going to go find Elijah. He said, what in the world did you run for? Why did you run? I mean, God just blessed you. God just blessed your life on the mountain. And you turn around and right there and run. Brothers and sisters, he runs. And the Bible says he goes and hides up under this juniper tree. And he, and he says what many of us, he says what many of us say in moments of depression, in moments of downtime in our life. He says, I've had enough. I'm tired. It ain't worth going on no more. Things ain't working out for me. It ain't working out like I thought it was. It seems like my life is falling apart. Everything's gone wrong. The wheels run off. The tire's flat and I ain't got a spare. Nobody loves me. I, I, I. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. And here's what he does. The Bible says he falls asleep and an angel stops by. And watch this. He cooks him bread and sets a cruise of water by his head. And when Elijah wakes up, he wakes up to breakfast. You smell bacon frying, amen. He wakes up and eats. And the Bible says he goes back to sleep. And the angel comes back again and feeds him and gives him water after his rest. Elijah gets up. Now, if an angel doesn't come fed me and gave me something good and cool to drink, touch me, I mean, I would have thought, I mean, when I read this, the next thing I thought was Elijah would have run up and found a tabernacle or found an altar somewhere to worship. Amen? Or a temple or something to go worship. But brothers and sisters, that's not how the devil plays. He goes on from a juniper tree after all this and goes on to a cave. And by this time, he's like some of us. He's at the lowest of the low. He's at the lowest of the low. God does not send an angel. Now, God... I said, God don't send no angel. God just shows up himself. Mm. Oh, my brothers and sisters. Can I just ask? Hey, I'm about to shout by myself. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. Has God ever passed by you himself? God ever showed up and walked right into your situation? You know there wasn't nobody but the Lord that could have done that, walked into my life. Oh, my. I'm glad to let you know, brothers and sisters, that God still makes house calls. Amen. He still shows up in your time of need. Amen. God will drop by him. Yeah, sure, he'll send an angel sometimes. But sometimes the Lord God Almighty will show up in your presence itself. And he gets there and he says, what are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here? And y'all know the story. This is what he said. I didn't want to read all. I just, I just. Gave you a Y'all know this story. I didn't have to read all this text. He said, Lord, I've been running for you a long time. Oh, I've been, I've been working. I, I, all of Israel, that all of them done turned their back on you. They all done walked away. They gone somewhere else. And I'm the only one trying. I'm the only one pushing. I'm the only one praying. And let, let, let me throw this in the pot right quick. Depression always starts off with an I. It always starts off with an I. Oh, I, I. Look, you got to learn how to move I out of the way and let God heal you, amen. If you move I out of the way, God will show up himself in your life. But watch this. He says, I've been doing it all. I've been doing it all. And the Lord lets the earthquake, but he wasn't in the earthquake. He lets the fire fall, but he ain't in the fire, amen. He lets the wind blow, and it's not in the wind. Ain't it interesting there's some things that earth, wind, and fire can't fix in your life? There's some things it ain't going to fix, amen. But the Lord he, himself, he shows up, puts himself there, and he speaks in a small voice. And that voice lets him know, I ain't done with you yet. Amen, I am not through with you yet. 
And if you're here this morning, you showed up this morning, amen, and that you're smelling good, looking good, walking good, eating good, amen, it's smooth sailing, you're happy, amen, everybody near you really likes you, amen, you ain't got no kind of enemies, everybody pats you on the back, really wants to see you, they really mean it, want to see you do good, you never have a dark day, you never have a down day, you never have a dismal day, nothing ever going wrong. If you in here this morning, amen, hey, and you say, Brother Frankie, my stuff's so smooth, it's great. I want you to take this message right now and put this thing in that freezer, amen, and keep it frozen because I'm going to promise you, I'm promise you coming, amen. Hey, I'm telling you, you're going to have to get it and thaw it out later on. You're going to need this because hell and high water knows your address too. But I want to talk to everybody else in here this morning who spends their time, spends your life trying to help other people and sometimes you need help yourself. If that's you, this sermon is for you. For people who have lost loved ones in your family and the absence of their presence is causing pain in your heart, this sermon is for you. For all of y'all that can be in a crowd, amen, you can be in a crowd, you can be in a whole room of people and still feel lonely, this sermon is for you. And look, all of y'all that just come off a mountain peak, everything was going good, and you don't know what happened, all of a sudden, whoo, I don't know what it is, amen. It just feels like the devil's been attacking you. It feels like the devil's been on your back. And for some reason or another reason, look, I'm telling you right now, this sermon is for you. Listen to me. Who am I talking to this morning, amen? If you've ever said, look, I can't go no more, I can't go another further, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, this sermon is for you. If you're sitting here right now and you ain't heard a word I said or said amen yet, this sermon is for you, amen, because your body is here, but your mind done checked out before you even walked in this morning. I want to tell you the devil is trying to destroy you. It's not just trying to destroy your pastor. He's trying to destroy you. He wants every member. He wants his church empty. He wants everybody gone. He wants you to walk away from the faith. You get so depressed and low, you got to high jump to get up on a curb sometimes. He wants you disgusted, busted, and, and you can't even be trusted. That's what he wants. What he wants. But I have an announcement to make this morning. I have an announcement to make whoo, for the pit of hell. And it's coming from the corridors of heaven this morning. Amen. This is a day that the Lord has made. Amen. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I made up my mind. I said I made up my mind. God help me in here this morning. I said I made up my mind. I'm going to rejoice, and I need somebody to rejoice. Tell your neighbor, I will rejoice this morning and be glad in it. I mean, I refuse to be depressed. I refuse to be down. I refuse. I, I find somebody to tell them I ain't going to be depressed no more. I refuse it, and I accept the fact that God is blessing me, and he's blessing you right now. Everyone, hey, I don't know if y'all can feel anything on that or not, but I feel something right there. God is blessing you right now. You might have walked in feeling low, but you can leave on top of the world, brothers and sisters. I said you might have walked in low, but you can leave up. Hey, man, you can leave flying high. If you, hey, I said you can leave high. I ain't talking about that kind of high, amen. We ain't passing nothing around in here, but you can leave high in the Holy Spirit, amen. And I'm talking about a healing and a breakthrough for somebody today. Somebody needs something from God, amen. God knows all you've been going through. God knows how you've been feeling. God knows what you're struggling with. God knows what's on the agenda for you tomorrow. And God put this on my heart, brothers and sisters, I believe, to tell somebody. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. But we know that weeping may endure for a night, but if you just hang on, amen. I said if you just hang on, joy will come in the morning. Amen. I said just hang on through the nighttime in Jesus Christ himself will show up. Amen. He'll come in the morning. Amen. I need everybody right quick. Somebody help me right here. I need somebody that knows what depression feels like. Who knows what it's like. You know what it tastes like. You know what it feels like. Look, you just lean over and tell somebody, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. I will rejoice and be glad. And I come too far to quit. I've come too far to turn around. I'm too crazy to go back where I come from. Amen. I'm going to turn this thing over to the Lord. I refuse to let my wounded heart hinder my walk with God and push me down. I'm moving on with my life. Amen. you got to move on past those things you can't control. Now, you just told me all that, preacher. How does God help me? How does God help me with depression? How does he do it? How does God fix, fix this? 
how does God deal with this issue? Well, number one, I'll just go ahead and I just got a couple points. I'm going to throw them at you right quick. And this is going to be a shotgun blast. He lets us know where depression is located. Consider, brothers and sisters, here it is, number one, consider where depression is located. Where is it coming from? If you know where it's located, you can work to avoid it. If you know where it comes from, y'all with me? If you know where it's located, you can avoid it. Now, stay with me. Elijah. Elijah, he has great victory on Mount Carmel. And fire falls from heaven. And that's a pretty good victory. Have I got a witness? Amen. I mean, I mean, if you can talk trash, I mean, if you can, if you if, if you can if you can talk trash about God to your adversaries and the ones that's against you, amen, and say stuff like, We're your God. <laughs> he ain't showing up. If you can do that, amen, it kind of stands to reason that you come out with a victory. Amen. Am I, are y'all with me? But I told you, I read it in here, Jezebel wants him dead. And he runs. See? He runs. So anybody that reads your Bible and you like it just a little bit and you understand just a little bit of it, this really don't make good common sense. Something wrong with this picture. 450 men I slayed. One woman I run. Hold up now. My testosterone ain't going to let me run. Am I right? Y'all ain't got to say nothing. Amen. E e even, even if she's with me, if she's whooping on me, I ain't going to run. I'm just going to take the beat. Amen. 450 men. He defeats them. But all of a sudden, one woman makes him run. One woman makes a threat. And he's gone. He hightails out of that. I mean, he done the left, broke camp and left. Nothing. I ain't, I'm talking about gone. Completely gone. And it's interesting, brothers and sisters, because something happens between that mountaintop where he got the victory and where he went bound up. He wound up with his threat that's given by the queen. Something happened. Something happened right there. So I told y'all, I looked at this real hard this, this week, and I, and I was talking to myself. And I know they say don't talk to yourself, but I think you ought to talk to yourself every once in a while. Amen? And I said my, to myself, I was trying to figure this out. I was looking at this, but I was kind of looking at it at a different angle, and I'm going to preach this way on this. And I said, is it the position of Jezebel? Because she is the queen. I mean, she is in, she's in charge. I mean, may, may, maybe he was afraid of her queenly authority. Y'all know what I mean. He was scared. She had high power. I mean, she was a powerful person. And then I said, no, I really don't think of that, Lord, because at this time, he's got God's authority. Amen, have I got a witness? God's been standing in him. God's been standing for him. I mean, he just seen the fire fall. God is way bigger than the queen. So it couldn't have been that. It couldn't have been that. It wasn't because she was the queen. So I said, well, maybe it was just plain and simple, just her intentions. Because her intention was to kill him. Amen. Amen. If I got a Bible reader, I mean, her intention was to kill him. But I got news for him this morning. He ain't figured it out yet. I mean, it was her intentions to kill him all along. That's the reason why the 450 prophets of Baal was there. I mean, they weren't there to decorate him. They was there to kill him. By the way, let me drop this in right quick. I know, and you better know, but I know the devil's always trying to get me. Always. Always on my trail. Don't think I'm crazy. I mean, I, I'm telling you right now, I know Satan stays on my trail. He's after me. Okay, y'all don't want to say amen. Amen. Look, you better say some prayers for yourself too because he's after not only me, but he's after you too. He wants you too. Amen. He's trying to destroy you too, not just me. Hear me, brothers and sisters. It's not her intentions, and it's not her position. Here's what I discovered in my study, myself. This is what I come up with. It ain't about the queen or it ain't about her threat. It's about his mental condition. It's about what's going on in his head. You know what I realized? When you look at this, the devil attacked his mind. The devil got right in here just like he does us. The same thing happens to us. He gets inside of here. Listen. Now come here and listen to me. Because I do not want you to walk out that door and not get this today. Depression, my brothers and sisters, is an attack of the devil 
on your mind. That's where it comes from. He don't want your bank account. He don't want your house. He don't want your car. I mean, he don't want, he don't want none of that stuff. Can I go deeper? Watch this. Not only is he against your mind, but here's what he wants to do to us. The devil is the father of all lies. Have I got a witness right there? And what he desires is for you to believe a lie. That's where it all starts. Believing something that ain't true. Something that ain't ever really come to pass. Or nothing. And he puts those thoughts in our mind. God help me in here. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. The, the devil is the father of all lies. And what he desires, brothers and sisters, is for you to believe that lie that he's putting in your head. While the truth is staring you right in the face. Oh, God, help us right here. Amen. And the reason why Elijah runs is because he's had a change. He had a change. He had a change of mind. He had a change of mind. Now, now, brothers and sisters, he sees his life through a perspective of the adversary. Y'all going to get it in a minute. Y'all going to get it right here. Just stay with me right here. He sees it through the eyes of the adversary instead of looking through the eyes of the adversary. What he does. That's what Satan does. He gets in there and gets us to think about these things and see. He, he creates his perspective of for us to look at in the way he wants us to look at it. The circumstances. It's like those temptations and stuff we was talking about this morning. Amen. He gets us to focus on things. He takes our eyes off what they ought to be on and puts them on something else. Elijah runs because he has a change of mind. Now he sees his life through the perspective of the adversary instead of the adversary. Now watch this. I'm going to argue this right here. Every time we're depressed, brothers and sisters, nine times out of ten, we believe in a lie. Why the truth is staring you right in the face. The lie says your life is not worth living. That's a lie. The truth says the Lord has done gave us his only begotten son. Amen. Just to make sure that you even have a life to live. And John 10.10 10 says, I want you to have life and have life more abundantly. The lie says, oh, I feel so lonely. Come on, help me, somebody. And the truth is, the truth is, Jesus says, and lo, I am with you always. Amen. A lie says, my life is falling apart. It's all messed up and it's falling apart. The truth is, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. A lie says, I don't know how in the world I'm going to make it. That's a lie, brothers and sisters. Don't even think that. I don't care how bad it gets. Don't think how in the world am I going to make it. The truth is the Lord's been helping you all your life. He's been taking care of you all your life through dangers seen and unseen. Amen. Through calls and snares, tricks and traps. Amen. God has always been there to help you. He's always been there. I told you, a lie says, my life ain't worth living. It ain't worth living. And the Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Woo, hey, a lie says, I'm too weak to keep going. But the truth is, the Lord is the strength of my life. Amen. Then the power of my life. My life is worth the living because he lives in me. And brothers and sisters, a lie says, you ought to quit going to church. You ought to go down there no more. The truth is, forsake not yourself. The assembling of yourself together. And as it comes to an end, especially, brothers and sisters, you better make sure you're showing up at the church house somewhere. You ain't got to come here, but make sure you're going somewhere and hearing something. Amen? A lie says, I don't know if I can trust God anymore. I don't even know if he can fix this. The truth is, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Amen? And lean not on thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he, not only nobody else, but he shall direct thy paths. A lie says, I'm born like this. The truth says, get born again. Amen. Hey, a lie says, you are not worship God. The truth is, whoo, with my body and my breath. Amen. God, I'm going to lift up my hands and shout the victory in his sanctuary. Amen. Whoo, look at somebody. Amen. Look at somebody. Look over towards somebody and say, hey, did you come for some truth this morning? Are you still believing the lie? You're looking for truth? I got some truth for you. No weapon. This form against you shall be able to prosper. Amen. Hey, I'm telling you right now, God is on your side, brothers and sisters. I don't care what happens. You are always the head and not the tail in God's eyes. Amen. You're above and not beneath. You're not below. Amen. You will conquer and overcome if you're walking with him. 
Deli said, oh, when you go in the hospital, you ain't going to make it through that procedure. Here's the truth. He was wounded for my transgressions. Amen. Bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, woo, hey, I'm already made whole. The lie says, you can't afford to tithe. The truth says, really says, you can't afford not to tithe. Amen. Here's the truth. God says, look, I dare you to trust me. I dare you to trust me. I'll open up the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing on you. You ain't even got, hey, who am I talking to this morning? The truth always prevails. Amen. I'm about to pull my hair out and I ain't even got none. Amen. High five somebody and tell your neighbor, amen, I'm not going to let the devil have my mind. I can hear the Apostle Paul as he addresses the Philippian church. He says, let this mind be in you. Woo. Oh, do you hear what I'm saying this morning, brothers and sisters? We cannot let him have our mind. You can't let him do it. You cannot let him attack you and get in your mind. Or he'll have you believe in a lie when the truth is staring you right in the face. Let me throw this in. I'm really through that point right there, but let me throw this in. Be careful, brothers and sisters. We all got to be careful of this. Everybody, be careful who you let feed your mind. Be real careful. Y'all notice it. Wait, watch, watch this. This is something I figured out, I'm, and we figured out a long time ago in my ministry. I ain't talking about nobody. Nothing. I don't mean this. Just listen to me. Folk going to talk. They're going to gossip. They're going to talk. They're going to cast you down. Look, they're going to talk about our church. They're going to talk about you. They're going to talk about me. Amen. They're going to talk about everything. People just in general are going to talk. Amen. But I made up my mind. Hey, people can talk all over the place all they want to be about me. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's fine. Thank God bless you what I'm going to say. Whether it be good or bad. I mean, I feel like the Apostle Paul because I'm going to tell you right now, as long as we're walking with Jesus Christ, you cannot bring up my mind and talk about my, 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 my life and talk about me without talking about Jesus Christ. That's the point we got to get to. That's the point where I'm going to stand. Amen. Talk all you want. Amen. Let them talk. Let them say anything. But don't let it get in your mind. We all struggle with that. Tina, talk to me right there. We all struggle with that. Don't worry about what nobody says. Just keep on plowing. Amen. Just keep on plowing. Okay. Every time, every time, 99.9% of the time when I preach, you're going to hear me say, open up your Bible. We're going to get in the Word. Open up your Bible. Open your Bible. Why, brother, I mean, uh, brothers and sisters, why, Brother Frankie, would you say that? Why, why do you say open up your Bible? Because some of y'all already know the Bible, the written, printed Word, amen, is God. He put his mind, a piece of his mind on paper. That's what your Bible is, a piece of God's mind, amen. That's the reason why when you do a little study, you'll find out that's why they call this the Old Testament and the New Testament. A testament is your mind put on paper. That's what it is. So when, what happens is when the testator or test four, or however you want to say that, dies, the will becomes in effect. So if you want to know more about what God's will is for your life, if you want to find out what God's mind is for you or about you, you want a preacher. And I ain't saying you got to listen to me, but I'm just saying you need a preacher to open up the word of God. Amen. Open up the Bible and tell you the saith the Lord. Amen. Because it's going to come from some pulpit somewhere exactly what you need to hear. That's why you don't need everybody else feeding your mind. You don't need everybody talking in your ear. Amen. I don't want the world to feed my mind. I don't want my friends to feed my mind. Sometimes I don't even need my wife to feed my mind. I don't want my kinfolk to feed my mind. I want God to feed my mind. Amen. So I can see clear through his lenses. You know, I talked about that focus the other night. Amen. So we can see clear through his lenses. So I can hear him say to me, amen, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light, amen, of the world. You are my child adopted into my family. I don't have time. You don't have time for other people to feed your mind because if their mind is messed up, if their mind is jacked up, amen, guess what? They're about to mess up your mind, amen, and we'll all be worried about the same thing, doing the same thing, doing the same sins, talking about the same sin. Look, I want somebody to say I want a renewed mind this morning. I want a renewed mind, Brother Frank. I need my mind renewed this morning. Here it is. The renewing of your mind. Trust in the Lord. Trust in Him. Consider how God treats you when you're depressed. Consider how God treats you when you're depressed. 
I'm getting ready to close. I got five minutes. I literally mean I got five minutes left right here, and that's all I got. Ain't five football minutes, and it sure ain't five praise baseball minutes. Amen. Amen. I got five minutes. I want you to hear something right here. I want you to hear what God does to help people who are depressed. Because of what he's done for Elijah is exactly what he does for me and you, brothers and sisters. Pay attention to the story. I ain't going to make nothing up. It's all in the Bible. It's all in the Scripture. Read it for yourself and come to your own determination. But I'm not going to lie to you. He feeds you. Amen. God feeds you every day. Amen. He feeds you. He makes sure that you stay fit. And he'll let you rest. Brother Jimmy said it this morning. When your mind's all jacked up, lay in the bed and talk to God. Amen. You'll rest all night. Amen. You'll sleep good if you talk to him. He knows you're tired. He knows what you're dealing with. The angel, watch this, lets Elijah sleep. And after he feeds him, make sure he gets plenty of rest, the angel stands him up and tells him, run on. Oh, I'm a, because there's more for you to do. I got more for you to do. Okay. I really thought when I said that, that the angel was going to take care of you, going to feed you. And set you I, I really thought that they would be a little bit more shouting and rejoicing right now. I don't know why I thought that. But so maybe there's a disconnect. I'm going to say it again. Right here, watch this. When God treats depression, he sends an angel. He feeds you a good meal. He gives you something nice and cool to drink. Let the church say, water, water, amen, water. Oh, I don't know where that comes from, amen, water. He don't give you something that's cool to drink. He's going to give you a cool drink of water. He sends you a word of encouragement. He stands you up and lets you keep going. You know, when I think about this remedy, when, I, mean, I, I mean, this is just kind of how it spoke to me. But when I really thought about this and I get to think about this remedy for, for what, what, what I see for depression right here, it really seems like all of us have been treated. He fed every one of us. He done fed every one of us. I mean, look, let me ask this question right here. How many of y'all ain't ever been rich, but you ain't ever missed a meal? Amen. Wave at me right quick. Amen. It's a sign that God's fighting depression in your life. Amen. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me take it a little bit farther. How many of y'all had a roof over your head last night and a place to rest and lay down and get some rest? Wave at me right quick. Amen. How many of y'all just had God stop by and once in a while and pick you up when you was down? Amen. And say, hey, I need you to run on a little bit longer. Wave at me right here. Amen. It seems like God don't want depression to get the best of our lives. Okay. Okay. Some of y'all still ain't saying nothing. Brothers and sisters, I understand because I, I thought about this too. I know why some of y'all ain't saying nothing, ain't shouting because some of y'all saying, well, I ate, had some cool drink. Ain't no angel touch me. Ain't no angel come by my house and touch me. I thought about that. That's what I, I had that thought. I said, well, you know, I don't know if an angel, I don't know. But if you do a little study about this angelology thing, however you want to say that, you'll discover that the word angel, angelos means messenger. And there's a couple of types of heavenly angels. There's, there's the, 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 the seraphim and the cherubim. I said that right. But here on earth, you'll find out there's another kind of angel. There's a prophet. There's an apostle. And there's a bishop. And there's a pastor. I didn't know this. I got to reading about this. Amen. And when you come to church, amen, you have a pastor declare God's word over you. Because, watch this, he is the set angel of the house. Don't nobody know that, amen. So whenever you come in, brothers and sisters, watch this. You are not come in waiting as good as the music is, and I love it around here. You are not come in waiting on the drums to start tapping, amen. You are not start waiting on the keyboard and nobody start singing, amen. You ought to come in singing, is there a word from the Lord today, amen. And I need some people in here to help me, amen. Oh, my, help me right here, amen. Woo! Who've been on the verge of quitting? You've been wanting to give up, wanting to lay it down and run, and throw in the towel. Look, but the devil messed, your, messed up and let your crazy self get in here one more time, amen. When you got to the church, God spoke directly to you. Well, it was so direct, you thought somebody had been in your house listening to your voicemails, reading your text message, reading everything about you. You thought that was them, amen. It was God. I'm going to tell you, God knows where you are. He knows your zip code. He knows your address. He knows what you need and when you need it, amen. God knows what you're going through. God God ain't left you. God's preparing you. And when you're going through depression, it's an attack of the devil. But there's always a deliverance from the divine. So brothers and sisters, you got to choose. You got to choose which one you're going to follow. You got to choose which one you want. You got to make a choice. Amen. You got to make a decision. Tell your neighbor right quick. Tell somebody, hey, the choice is yours. <laughs> 
The choice is yours, which way you want to go, amen. And the devil is saying, throw in your towel. But God is saying, wipe your brow, get up and get back in the fight, amen. Get back here. The devil is saying, it ain't going to get no better. But God's saying, whew, if it don't get no better, I'm going to walk with you through it. You ain't going to be by yourself. The devil is saying, it's going downhill, amen. God says, I got plans for you in the valley. Hey, watch this. The devil says, you ain't going to praise God no more. You ain't going to do that. But God is saying, when you look back over your life, when you look back over your life and you look around and see everything I've done for you, how can you hold your peace? Woo! Hey! Mm. I need somebody to help me right along through here. Anybody here who's faced depression, at least one good time in your life, and you know what that was, but you live to tell about it, you ought to hop up right quick and wave a holy hand in the air. Amen. Stand to your feet and tell God, thank you. Amen. I need some people in here who've been lonely. You've been down. You've been depressed. Amen. But God gave you company. Amen. God come by and held your hand. Look at somebody and say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Amen. God will get you through all this. God will get you through all. He'll walk with you. He'll talk with you. He'll stand up in you. He'll make everything all right. He's a lily of the valley. Amen. Woo. He'll do it. And if you thought about quitting at least one good time, and we all have, amen. You thought about throwing in a towel. You thought about giving up. Look, your mind, your mind is a terrible thing to waste, amen. Don't let nobody tell you how not to use your mind. Just hang in there. Walk with Jesus, amen. And God just sent me by to encourage somebody in the faith this morning, amen. Look, if, if you don't know what it feels like to have a good testimony and what God can do for you, just grab me by the hand, amen. I Grab a hold of me. You can feel what a testimony feels like, amen. I've had death in my family. I've cried tears, amen. I've walked through the valley of shadow of death by myself, amen. I thought, amen, but God was there holding me up all the way through, amen. I've been through it all. I've walked through it all, and I'm still here this morning, amen. Still here. We've had struggles and strain. We've walked through all of it, brothers and sisters. Heartache and pain. Woo, we've had it all. But through it all, you're still here. I said through it all, you're still here. You're still standing, amen. Oh, all the tears we've had to cry. All the hellish circumstances we've had to put up with and walk through in our lives, brothers and sisters. I don't look like what I've been through. Amen, ain't you glad that this morning, amen. Everything I've had to walk through, I don't look like I had to walk through it. Because I made up my mind that I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to trust in I'm going to trust in him. Come on, brother. One out of four of us is depressed right now. But God is telling, whew, God spoke in my spirit and said, look, if I brought you out, I'll bring that number four out. One, two, three, four. He'll bring you out. One, two, three. He'll, he'll get you out. One, two, three, four. Hey, he'll bring you out of it. God, if he delivered me, he can deliver you. Amen. I said, if he brought me out, he can bring you out. The same God that brought you out can bring your neighbor out. The same God that delivered you, sister, is the same God that's going to deliver the next one that's dealing with the same thing. He can do the same thing for you. Won't he do it? Amen. Won't he bring you out? Here's what I want you to understand. I'm, I'm done right here. Y'all get ready right here. Here's what I want you to do. You'll understand you can't worship and be depressed at the same time. It ain't going to work. And if anybody is depressed in here this morning, anybody's under the enemy's attack, and he's in your mind and got your mind, I declare victory in the enemy's face. If you declare victory in the enemy's face, God will stand up in your life. God will carry you on through to the other side. If you lift up a hand, wave to him, say, Lord, thank you. I claim that victory in my life. God, I thank you for the victory in my life. I rejoice in the Lord. When it's all coming up against you, you don't know what to do. I dare you to bless the Lord yeah. anyhow. Amen. Bless him anyhow. No matter what you do. Yes. Yes.